Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson here, and I'm here to bring you the 9-3 notes on properties of logarithms. So um, let's think back to our properties of exponents, since exponents and logarithms are really just inverses of each other. When we would look back at something like 3 to the second times 3 to the fourth, we know that we need to add those two proper or those two exponents together, and we end up with 3 to the 2 plus 4 power, which is 3 to the 6th power. Um, since logarithms and exponential functions are inverses of each other, the property for logarithms is also similar. When I have two logarithms that are being multiplied together, I end up with, you know, the log base b of m times n, and I can split that into the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. So if I'm looking at the log base 3 of 2 times 4, that's the same thing as the log base 3 of 2 plus the log base 3 of 4. So let's take a look and use that in our first example, number one. And number one, it says, use the fact that the log base 4 of 2 is approximately 1 half, and the log base 4 of 3 is approximately 0.79. And we're going to approximate the value of the log base 4 of 6. So since I know that the log base 4 of 6 is equal to the same thing as the log base 4 of 2 times 3, I can split that into the log base 4 of 2 plus the log base 4 of 3. And then since I know the log base 4 of 2 is approximately 1 half, and I know the log base 4 of 3 is approximately 0.79, I can take those two and I can add them together. Substitute in the values that I know, 0 0.5 plus 0.79248, and I end up with about 1.2925. Using that same method in number 2, let's say I have log base 2 of 3 is approximately 1.58 or 59. Um, we're going to see if we can approximate the value of log base 2 of 48. All right, so this one looks a little bit different. Now, what we need to think about here is what is 48 when we break it down? If I break 48 down, it's the same thing as 16 times 3, and I know that 16 is also 4 times 4, which is 2 times 2, and that's 2 times 2 as well. That 3 just comes down. So those are all of our factors of 48. So if I use that to my knowledge here, um, I know that... Uh, I have the log base 2 of 48 is going to be the log base 2 of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now, what happens here is that you've got a lot of these logarithms strung together. You've got the log base 2 of 2 for that one, then another log base 2 of 2 for that one, then another log base 2, oops, log base 2 of 2 for that one, one more log base 2 of 2. And then finally the log base 2 of 3. Now here's what's special about those or how that helps you. Now in the original problem, they told me the value for the log base 2 of 3. So I know this one is about 1.585. But they didn't tell me this, log base 2 of 2, log base 2 of 2, log base 2 of 2. But remember that the log base 2 of 2 equaling some value means that it's 2 to some power equals 2. Well, that's always going to be 1. 2 to the first power is going to equal 2. So I know that all of these things are 1. So I can add those all together. I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus the 1.585, which gives me approximately 5.585. So let's take a look at how we could use that for solving logarithmic equations in number three. In number three, I want to solve for x. I have the log base four of x plus the log base four of x minus six. And I know that that's all going to equal two. So now let's think about what would happen here. These are separated out and being added, which means that originally as one equation, they were being multiplied together. So I have the log base 4 of x 
times x minus 6. So I can take the two logs and I can multiply them together because they've been split apart and added. Now I know that I have one log, it's base 4, I have this 4 raised to the second power, and it's equal to x times x minus 6. Well, that I can solve. So then I simplify everything I can here. 16 is equal to x squared minus 6x. I'm going to move everything over to one side, so I've got to subtract that 16. And I end up with 0 is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 16. And then I can factor and solve here. So I end up with um, a product of negative 16, a sum of negative 6. I want a negative 8 and a positive 2. So this is x plus 8 and x minus 2, which gives me solutions of x equals negative 8. I'm sorry, x minus 8, x plus 2. I had that backwards there. Minus 8 plus 2. So I get a positive 8 and I get an x equals negative 2 for my solutions. But now here's the thing about logarithms. I can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So this negative 2 is actually not a possible solution for me. My only solution here is going to be 8. Let's try number 4 and see if we can get through that one. To do. Now I'm looking at the log base 8 of x and the log base 8 of x minus 12, and it's all equal to 2. So again, I know that these two things are being added, and since they're being added, they were originally as 1 being multiplied. So the log base 8 of x times x minus 12 is equal to 2. What that gives me now is it allows me to take 8 and raise it to the second power, so I get 8 squared is equal to x times x minus 12. I can distribute this, and I get 64 is equal to x squared minus 12x, and then subtract the 64. So I have 0 is equal to x squared minus 12x minus 64. And again, I want to factor and solve. So factoring and solving, I want a product of negative 64, sum of negative 12. That gives me negative 16 and positive 4. So I have x minus 16 and x plus 4. That gives me solutions of x equals 16 and x equals negative 4. But again, I can't have that negative logarithm, so that one's gone. I end up with just the positive 16 for my solution. All right, so we're going to stop there for our video today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hop back to Schoology and take that quiz. Have a great night.